This is Matt for Boxing Social. Delighted as always to be joined by Dave Caldwell. Dave, we're in Leeds, highly talented Hopi Price, one of your young chargers back out. Talk to me, how's his preparations been? He looks in great nick. Very good. He's, he's, um, he's not only is he a great young talent, he's, um, he's got all the attributes mentally that needs to go with that talent. You know, and it, it, he's just, he's, he's young, but he's so professional as well. Yeah. So we had again, you know, we don't have camps. We just train all the way through. Um, just had great training, great training sessions. One thing we always bring up when we talk about Hopi Price is temperament. That's something that's key with you. And it's something you don't always see in someone so young where they're a bit raw. But when you watch him fight, I was saying to one of the other guys, I said, watch him fight. I said, he's like seasoned. Like, he doesn't get flustered. How Im Absolutely. How impressed are you with how he conducts himself in the ring and how he doesn't smother his work and he has the right temperament? I've always said um, the best mentality I ever worked with my fighters helping people at Aimaker and things like that was George Groves. His mentality was unbelievable, unflappable. Yeah. So calm, chill, no matter as the levels went up and, and the importance of the fights, the pressure, whatever, his mentality was ice cold. Yeah. Hope he reminds me of him so much in that mentality. Just so chilled, so calm. Um, um, do you want them taken off? So calm and um, I'm just, I'm just talking shit about you now. Just making up stuff, saying that, saying that you're... Slagging you off, saying you're a knobhead in the gym. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm a bit of a, a, bit of a deep runner. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm mid-interview, I'm taking his gloves off. He's just jealous, look, because I've got a good hairstyle. He said I'm going thin, going but thin. I'm not. Like well, if you look, like yeah. Me. My, hair, my hair is here to stay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see when he gets to my age. Yeah, we'll see what he's we'll saying see. when he hits them, hits, hits them later years, what he's yeah, saying. If the job gets rough, I'll be getting it done. <laughs> Telling you, um, but yeah, you can see obviously, good kid. Yeah, his, te his temperament's unreal. I mean, when when I um, first took him out to when we went to America, Freddie Roach's gym, he's supposed to be sparring at ten o'clock. He's gloved up at ten o'clock. We didn't get into the ring until about half past one. He never he never it's flapped, and I, and I kept going up to him and saying, you know, stay calm, stay warm. He was like, yeah, no problem, no problem. Got in there, did business. It, Boxing Saudi on AJ's undercard, things like that. Nothing bothers him. He's just he is what he is in the gym. He's got great, great attitude. A few friends in Leeds and they they put me on to him way before I even saw him fight. And I'm like, I'll keep an eye out for him. And you know everything you've just said there like sort of comes true. Um, has he got sort of all the hallmarks of someone who'll go to the very top in this? Yeah, yeah. I've, I mean, you've seen it. Yeah, you know, you you want a little bit of luck. You want the right fights. You want the right development. It's just because you've got a great kid with great potential doesn't mean that he needs to be fighting for major titles in 10 fights and things yeah, like that. I think there's this, there's this rush where people want to, you know, if you're, if you're good, sling them in. Yeah. Let's test them, let's do it. No, let's get the right building fights like they used to do in the old days, like, like you see people like Top Rank do where they're developing fighters. Remember Shakur Stevenson coming through at 18 years old and people say, ah, oh, He's, he's not physically strong enough. When he steps up, he'll get found out. Oh, he doesn't punch hard enough. When he steps up, he'll get found out. But they give him the right fights, kept the brakes on, just developing, developing. And then when he was ready for the leash to be taken off, then you look at the fights that they're taking out. That's, I believe that Hope and Price is somebody like that where you need to, you need to give the right fights for him to develop. Yeah. And if you look at his career so far, in the eight fights, he's had good fights. He's had opponents that come in to win, tough guys. I'm not interested in blowing people away in one or two rounds while they're at this stage because that's not giving them an experience you know so i i, I want him if, if if i get to do what i want with him development wise i don't think this kid's got a ceiling i think he's very, he's outstanding he's outstanding it's going to be an interesting ride with him and um, let's talk about one of your other fighters someone who i was absolutely devastated for no more than obviously you were Laron richards how's he is he in good spirits or is he a... um good spirits is He's had a shit, shit year. He's had a year from hell. Um, but we look at, we always look at a flip side. And, you know, not, and it's not a case that everything happens for a reason. You have to look for that positive. flip side. You have to look for that positive, and you find that positive, and you go with that. Yeah. What's done is done. You can't, you know, you can't, you can't help it. That, that was a nightmare. That was, you know, to to be one day away from from fighting after. He lives up. He he, he lives up in Rotherham. You know. Paying fortunes for, for for accommodation when he's from London, he's away from his family, so he sacrifices a lot 
everything that goes into his camp costs all year round, everything, no fire end of it. So it's not like, oh, pulls out because he don't want to fight. Mate, come on. It's just happened, yeah. he's ill, he got over it. He's well, he's having a, he's still still not in the gym yet. He'll be back next week, we're gonna go back in tech, taking over next week. Hopefully we'll get that fight done for February. Yeah. And then we move on and then and you know, 2023 is a it's the year where, where we want activity, we yeah. want fights, that's all I'm interested in. You must have been a bit inspired by some of the comments that came out um, straight after because he's not he him of all people with the year he's had, what I wanted to not fight. And he's been in there with the likes of a Gongora before and, and obviously Zach Shelley was well up for the fight, so I get why he was a bit peeved, but yeah. some of the you're keen to run back and say, you know what, we'll get this on in February, March, whenever. We said we said it straight away, we'll we'll, we'll do the that that can be as far as we're concerned, Laurent's next fight. It's not like, oh, it's pulled out so we can fight somebody else or whatever. No, we'll fight him next in February. That's not a problem. Yeah. You know, we can't do it in January because the simple reason is that I've given him time out to rest because obviously it's a bug, whatever you want it, whatever it wants to be. He's been to the doctors. He's got the old clear, but his blood pressure is really low. I've just come in here now and um, uh, a couple of the trainers are telling me about, about somebody else's basic, um Grant, Grant Smith told yeah. me about that. Somebody is just same thing, passed out. Boom, there you go. There's a bug going around or whatever. You've got to let that out of the system. Because what if that happens in a fight? So you, you've got to let it get out of the system, yeah. get back into things, and then we'll, February's a perfect day. Yeah. So that's fine. But January will be a bit of a rush. February is a perfect day. I think everybody's hoping we see him just a bit more active. I know no one wants to fight him because it's a bit of a nightmare, but fingers crossed we do. Look, I want to get your opinion on another former fighter. I know you spoke about it before, but we haven't spoke yet. Derek Chisora, Tyson Fury. Derek did what Derek does. He goes in there and he does not have quit or anything in him. And he will go in there until he does get put out. But from a trainer's point of view, someone who has been in his corner before, were you a bit like, come on, get this towel chucked in? I, I still haven't watched it. I'll be honest with you. I'm not, not, I will watch it, but I've not had time to. I've got a fire on on Saturday. I've got all the things going on. So I haven't had a chance to... I've, all, I've only just caught up on the uh, on the Dazon undercard from Saturday night. I still haven't seen Chocotito's fight yet. But I've seen, I saw the, you see that. I watched the result. I watched the result as in um, Osalito. Yeah. That was a great fight. But what I'm saying is I ain't got round to that yet because I don't like watching little highlights. You know when I haven't watched something live, I don't yeah. want to watch little highlights where you go on YouTube and you get highlights, highlights. I want to watch the full fight. Yeah. So I can only go on what I listen to on TalkSport. And what I listen to on TalkSport wasn't nice to listen to. I didn't want to watch the fight because I could only see either Derek getting hammered, wiped out, Derek getting where Fury decides I'm just going to win on points and getting a sustained beating yeah. or it being a Derek just giving everything at it and Fury's gunslinging but can't get him out of there and Derek either, either way I could only see Derek getting a lot of punishment and I didn't want to see nice that to see so I didn't choose I chose not to watch that well let's talk about it from another point of view considering what he's doing in his career I mean headlining double figure losses and he's still headlining he's a, he is a draw no matter what anyone says I think Eddie's alluded to it as well and many others and it's only a decision he can make but after he's made a, a, a couple, we assume a couple of million off that fight would you like to see him bow out and go I said that well, Parker yeah, you I said to, I said that to Parker and I said to him after Parker that I would like him to retire but it's none of my business Derek will do what he wants to do what I would like him to do for the sake of himself is have a look back and say, do you know what? I've had a fucking great career. Unbelievable. I've had a great career. I've provided British fight fans with so much enjoyment, so much excitement. You know what? I'm gonna what I've earned and what I've created for my, myself and my family, I'm gonna go and enjoy now. Thanks a lot, boxing. See you later. No more punches in my head. That's what I'd like him to do. I saw a, a, a you know couple of quotes where he said that he still wants to carry on boxing I'm hoping that that was just the adrenaline and the, the pride and things yeah. you know not wanting to go out I'd like him to retire I would yeah. like him to retire because he's got nothing left to prove he's got, he doesn't need to fight yeah. it's just that it's just that desire and that want to keep on fighting find something else that can fit fit that that role do you know what I mean 100% we've seen how hard it is to walk away I mean if Floyd Mayweather is still fighting YouTubers just to get that buzz we see Tyson retire for a few months and then we're like I can't it's handle hard it because that's all they know you know I, I seen I seen Tyson Fury where he said you know he, he, he loves to fight he loves to you know, life without boxing it's gonna you know how, how does that go it's very hard because fighters they give 
everything for it. They don't go out the mates, they don't on you know, they're on diets, every, everything's regimented, everything's got the schedule, isn't it? And then there's the adrenaline and the buzz of the ring walk, the fights, you know, yeah. then there's the the, the, the crowd and, and the love that you get from there's a lot to yeah. to to give up on as such, but it, you've got to at some point, the way that I look at it is once it's time to go, the difference between staying, what you, what's the difference between I've got to sort out a new life for myself now at 38 rather than at 43 when you've took even more damage, five years worth more damage. Do you know what I mean? But it's always something that they can they can come to terms with. And just quickly, we saw Usyk get on the ropes, didn't blink an eye when Tyson was screaming in his face and Joe Joyce then joined the party and I thought, fantastic, these are the fights we want to see. Fury Usyk, just quickly, because I know you and up here be getting off, but Fury versus Usyk, how do you see it panning out? I think, Us I think Usyk's an incredible talent. I think he's brilliant. But you'd have to say Tyson's size, plus the fact that he's brilliant at what he does as well, skillful, balls, tough. Yeah. He's, you would say that he's got the advantages. Yeah. Um, but if anyone can can negate that and, and, and outbox Fury, then 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 Usyk can. It's a great fight. It's a fight we want to see. But also, I'd Joe Joyce, see Joe well. Joyce against, against Fury. That'd be a great fight. Well, Joe Joyce versus Deontay Wilder. The one-punch oh. knockout versus the immovable force. What? That's the thing. I, I just want to see Joe Joyce in massive fights. Yeah. Because he's exciting. And, and he's you know, he's, he's, he's exciting. It looks all wrong when you watch it, but it works. Do you know what I mean? I've never seen out ringside when Joe Parker were hitting him with shots that would have put the most men out. I was like, this is, nah, just turn the PlayStation off. He needs to go. Look, Dave, I appreciate you talking, giving Boxing Social some of your time. We look forward to seeing Hopi on Saturday night and catching up with you in the new year with Laron and everyone. Appreciate it. Yes, thanks a lot. Nice.